more to dive into later. Our next speaker is Dr. Rui Min He. He is Singapore's Chief Artificial Intelligence Officer, where he leads a multi-stakeholder effort to achieve Singapore's strategic AI objectives, including developing and implementing Singapore's national AI strategy. He is also concurrently the Singaporean government's Deputy Chief Digital Technology Officer and a member of the United Nations High-Level Advisory Body on AI. Dr. He, the stage is all yours. Welcome. Distinguished guests, um, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be here at the World AI Conference with its focus on applications, thoughtful conversations, and fundamental optimism that technology is a force of good. I thank Brian from Concordia AI for the opportunity to share on Singapore's um, approach towards AI governance. Every country's approach towards policy is shaped by its unique circumstances, um, such as its history, its national priorities, comparative advantages, and industrial base. Singapore is no different. Nevertheless, for AI safety and governance, I think there are four common themes that are broadly applicable across countries, because we all start from the same place. And Gaia gave, actually gave, gave half my talk, so my life is a lot easier now. Uh, let me speak about each of them in turn. Um, first, I think we need to approach AI governance with a spirit of humility. Um, as former OpenAI board member, uh, Helen Toner notes, there is no agreement on what it really means to be intelligent. Moreover, as many of the speakers this morning said, nobody really understands the inner workings of AI systems, particularly deep neural networks. Um, furthermore, AI technologies are rapidly evolving, but we cannot predict with any accuracy or certainty of how AI systems will evolve. We do not know if technical methods towards AI safety, such as mechanistic interpretability or formal methods, will really work. And I see some nod nodding in the front few rows. Chris is smiling at me. On the other hand, we also do not know if some of the worst case scenarios will come true. Right? AI has been overhyped before, as, as mentioned earlier. Hence, as many of the speakers at this morning's session shared, there are many known unknowns and unknown unknowns about AI. Hence, we should refrain from making assessments with certainty, particularly about the future. Instead, policymakers need to humbly, to humbly adopt a continual learning mindset, to re-examine the assumptions, to keep up to date with the latest in science, and to have a keen sense of technology's impact on society. We need to learn from experts from academia and industry, many of whom are gathered here today, and we need to learn from each other. None of us have all the answers, and we need to consult widely to poll expertise. Conferences like the World AI Conference are important opportunities for network, um, for knowledge sharing, through which we will improve our shared understanding of AI. Humility also means to have the empathy to listen to and learn from non-expert voices, citizens, workers, writers, artists, youths, the disabled, all have important perspectives. Their fears and emotions about AI are real. They may differ by country and sector, and we need to understand them. I am grateful for the United Nations Advisory Body on AI that they consulted very widely before coming up with its recommendations. This includes my fellow members, uh, Ling Han and Zheng Yi. Ling Han is here with us today. Humility also involves the willingness to, un to admit that there are key questions about AI that we do not know the answers to, so that they can be efforts to uncover answers and so that we do not make decisions based on unfounded assumptions. It was in this spirit that we convened the Singapore Conference on AI last December, which, got, which brought together global experts from different domains to articulate key questions of AI that if unlocked, will lead to the development and deployment of AI for the global good. Some of the delegates at the conference last December are here with us today, versus Don Song, Yao Tong, Irene, and Brian. Humility 
also includes a recognition that our regulatory responses may be wrong or they may need updating. Now, this does not mean that as governments or policymakers, we sit back and just wait. Instead, we can start with the introduction of soft regulations and guidelines, gather feedback from the affected parties, observe the consequences of the guidelines, amend them if necessary, before hard coding them into regulations. In Singapore, we have introduced baseline steps, um, safeguards with practical guidance and continuously calibrate our guidance in line with developments. In 2019, Singapore was the first country to launch a model AI governance framework to provide businesses and consumers with practical guidelines on the responsible use of AI. This year, following extensive consultations with the international and industry com communities, we've updated our framework to include generative AI. Now, we believe that an iterative learning approach is far more sensible and attempting to regulate all of AI's potential harms. So that was humility. Second, we need to approach AI governance with a sense of perspective. We need to be careful about false dichotomies. Nothing is really black and white about AI policy. For example, an AI system can be generally useful, but it sometimes says incorrect things. AI can increase productivity, but it can also cause job disruptions. AI can help with climate change mitigations, it can also hurt the planet with its high consumption of electricity and power. AI can do a lot for healthcare. And AI systems can generate deep fakes and scams, but there are also ample examples of AI being deployed for the public good. For example, in Singapore, we use AI to smoothen immigration clearance, predict hospital times, optimize train maintenance. Citizens can also access some, uh, access some government services using chatbots. So regulation and innovation are also a false dichotomy. We need pro-innovation regulations that allow the beneficial applications to flourish while guarding against the harmful users. This weight of balance um, differs sector to sector. For example, the worst case scenarios for self-driving vehicles are quite different from cancer diagnosis or chatbots. AI also does not exist in a vacuum. It is part of a technical product, which is part of a use case, and it's part of a broader environment that we interact with. Hence, it may be useful to think about AI policies in a broader regulatory environment. In recent years, Singapore has updated our suite of laws and to safeguard the digital domain, including for personal data protection and against misinformation and disinformation that is spread online to better manage cyber risks and egregious content and curb online criminal activities. In these regulations, the human or the institution remains responsible for the consequences of their decisions, even if these actions were aided by AI systems. So that was perspective. Third, I think we need to increase and improve our capabilities to govern AI. This starts with encouraging many of my fellow policymakers to use AI so that they develop a baseline understanding of the potential and limitations of such technologies. In Singapore, we actively promote the use of AI within the government. Civil servants can access AI-enabled transcription, summarization, and LLMs from their government laptops. AI even helps them draft responses to citizen queries. It is important for ecosystems to have the practical, technical capabilities to develop and regulate AI rather than just talk at the level of abstract principles. Hence, we also encourage the community of more technically inclined government officials to develop their own AI products and tools. We create, also create avenues for them to share their learnings. For example, I mentioned, as, I, as I mentioned at this morning's panel, our government agencies developed the AI Verify Minimum Viable Product in 2022 which provides a practical way for developers to demonstrate that their AI systems measure up to internationally recognized governance principles. Last month, we also launched product, uh, Project Moonshot, a challenge to ourselves to extend the AI Verify Toolkit from traditional AI to generative AI. To ensure a pipeline of new tools and new methods to regulate AI, we also actively support research in areas such as digital trust, online safety, and responsible AI. Researchers work together with government officials on research that is inspired by real needs 
and see their fruits of their labor immediately translated into applications. Our researchers find this very fulfilling. But capacity building extends beyond tools for policymakers and developers, for government tools, because government tools, while they may be effective, they are not a silver bullet. To truly re reduce the harmful effects of AI, we need to develop a population that, is, that are confident and discerning users of AI. This enables them to engage in the digital environment, raises their competencies, skill sets, and employability. Empowering our citizens and businesses to reap the benefits of AI is a key pillar of our national AI strategy, which we updated last year. Uplifting their professional competencies is done through broad-based and sector-specific skills upgrading, often in close partnerships with industry partners, as well as pre-employment and company-led training efforts. Additionally, we are also helping all citizens increase their awareness and familiarity of AI through measures such as community roadshows, including in partnership with our public library network and mass media campaigns. Finally, we need to be willing to cooperate internationally. AI is produced in a global su supply chain from the production of chips, the training of data, the consumption of models, and the development of applications. And users come from all around the world. We live in a borderless digital world. What happens in one country will affect developments everywhere. And AI is too complex and evolves too quickly for any one company, one country, or institution to have a monopoly of wisdom on regulation of AI. And we all mutually benefit when we collaborate on solutions and share experiences and um, approaches. Furthermore, a fragmentation of AI governance and security frameworks raises compliance costs for businesses and slows down useful AI adoption. Thus, while it is natural that every country has slightly different perspectives and positions on AI, we need to work hard to overcome our differences and find common ground. Yesterday, I spoke about how countries can work together at the Global AI Governance Forum Ministerial Roundtable. Particularly, we need to come together to find common problems worth solving. We need to work bilaterally, regionally, multilaterally to facilitate norms and encourage the creation of global interoperable standards and common tools for AI governance. At this morning's panel, I also shared on how we open sourced AI Verify and launched the AI Verify Foundation as a vehicle to tap on the global open source community to crowd in expertise and capabilities. Let me conclude. The challenge of AI safety and governance will continue to evolve, but we must sustain our engagement with the hard technical questions, with the policy dilemmas, and with each other. If we collectively adopt the very human traits of a spirit of humility, a sense of perspective, a desire to increase our capabilities, and our willingness to collaborate, I am confident that we can achieve the right balance of governing this particular technology and collectively harness AI to serve the public good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. He, for your inspiring recommendations.